What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. Um, I'm excited for this one. It's a good friend of mine. He's a pastor um, in Connecticut, New Haven, um, and we're going to interview him here in the Be Creative, Be Great studio. Um, we had to do a little bit different this time because of with, with all the stuff that's going on, you know, and, and coffee shops not allowing uh, people to, to be inside their, their coffee shops or whatnot. Uh, we're gonna do it here. Just bear with me, please bear with me. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. Sometimes, you know, it could be a little bit more difficult. I don't have a, a friend of mine with me here on this episode, but we're gonna still do the show. The show must continue to go through. So it cuts off at least the video, like around 25 or 28 minutes or so. And then the rest of it is just gonna be audio. So just bear with me, please watch the full video um, and towards the end, the audio. It's really good, you're gonna be blessed by it. And um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel because it helps move the video forward. God bless you guys and I hope you enjoy the interview. Today we have a special guest. Uh, he's a pastor, he's a family man, he's an evangelist, he's a friend. Um, and God has been doing a lot of amazing things with, uh, with you that I've, I've seen all the time. And um, we, we want to go a little bit deeper in, into a little bit of his life, you know, and, and, and how he has been during this whole, you know, season of his life now that we're in, in this whole COVID stuff. And I know it's impacted a lot of people. Um, but for all those that are watching, we thank you for tuning in. And we hope you enjoy this, um, uh, this interview with, with Pastor Lenny. Um, dude, man, it's a pleasure to, to have you again. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for having me here. And just to see you again, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I haven't. It's been a. It's been a minute. It's been for a real, minute since yeah, since yeah, we've yeah. been able to like yeah. chat and 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 just like if it, if it's not part of your your prayers things that you were always yeah, doing yeah, before, yeah. I, I I don't think we really had some moments to just like sit down and just break yeah, bread yeah. a little bit. Even though we went to the same church. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that was interesting. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that was another thing. We we went to the same church and and it was just always like a hi and bye. Yeah, How you yeah, doing? Everything right, good? Right, okay, God right. bless you. You know. Yeah. Um. So so talk to me, man. Like how how's it been? How 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 have you been? You know, during this time and since the last time I I, I saw you, what yeah. you been up to? Yeah, like you were talking earlier before you got on, I was saying this is probably for me. Twenty twenty has been like the best year. Yeah. Like in the midst of COVID and everything else like that, you yeah. know, even catching COVID early on, um, you know, I was I was really overweight. It was like 260. Wow. At my at my height was a lot. I caught COVID, took off 20 pounds right away. <laughs> it got me moving because like I was I was held in the house for like 20 days, and I literally came out Easter Sunday out of quarantine. Wow. I had an extended quarantine because I had a cough that wouldn't go. Get out Easter Sunday and I walked, man. I walked like probably eight miles. I was so happy to be out of the house moving around. Right that it set me on this new traction of walking. So yeah. I started walking, next thing you walking leads to running, running leads to working out. Right. And I'm like 40 something, you know, 48 pounds lighter now. Wow, and that was in March you said, That was right? in March, so yeah, then you, yeah. So you, like the, the, you, you were like the beta. Well, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, for, this real, for real, for real, for real. Like people were calling me like basically like, you're gonna die brother, <laughs> like, I, like I love you, <laughs> but <laughs> I love you, how can I help you? I'm gonna keep you praying, I'm gonna keep praying for your family. And I was like, Man, I thought you were a man of faith, man. Don't speak curses over me, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it was crazy. But I remember a few different people calling me, asking how I was doing. Uh, I didn't share this, man. My brother, actually, he was a non-believer, right. um, literally was calling me every day. He was petrified. He thought, like, oh, man, he's going to die. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm not going to die, man. I'm mm -hmm. going to live through this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, says a prayer one day. He says, man, God, if you deliver my brother from this, um, and he's he's on the verge like have you have a drinker, and he's like you deliver my brother through this I'm gonna quit drinking. Wow. And the Lord started delivering me through it. And he just like hasn't drank since, man. Wow. Man. You know, and and through that he's getting clarity of mind, which is now able to like hear the messages, also see the direction of his life and other things like that. I'm believing still, I and mean, he hasn't gotten saved yet, but I'm believing he will. Okay. You know, as he walks further and further away, it gets more and more clarity. He's gonna hear the message and be mm. like, "Yeah, I get it now." You yeah, know? no, that's good. And 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 how how was it? I don't want to stay stuck on on a COVID thing because yeah. we always like we saw. You know, I I think it's overrated already. Yeah. This whole COVID yeah. thing. Yeah. Um. Um. But like when you were when you were at the moment like of like those twenty days that you were just like isolated, right? Did and and you being a person that's always out and and yeah. going and yeah. talking yeah. with people. Yeah. 
did, did like I know a lot of people it affected them really heavy on the physical side, but did you find it it was like affecting you on the like on the uh, mental side? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah the first um, so like the first day I watched like Netflix. That's all I did. Like after after the first four days I was just sleeping sleeping sleeping. So day five I get up and I'm like all right I'm good somewhat I can walk around. I watched Netflix all day pretty much, and then the second day I was like I can't do that. There's yeah. no way. So I was like, how do I get through my day? And I literally, I'm an ex-Marine, so I literally went back to military training and was like, every hour on the hour, I'm going to do something different. Mm. I'm going to you know, do worship for an hour. I'm going to read my Bible for an hour. I'm going to pray for an hour. I was even squeezing in like hours of silence, mm. which is like super hard, you know, super hard. My first time was like five minutes went by, and I literally thought like an hour went by, and it was like, Man, it's only five minutes. Like an hour of silence. Dude. An hour really? of silence, wow. man. That yeah, was, this is an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, and I like I, I came out of that thing just realizing, like, uh, you know, biblically, there's like three isolations that Jesus goes through. He goes th you know, after he gets baptized. Um, this is my son, who I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. and then he gets thrust into the wilderness. It's Forty days of isolation yeah. or quarantine, right, right? Right. Forty days of quarantine, mm -hmm. and he becomes against to to really destroy his identity, who he is. God just calls him his son. Now the enemy wants to use that, leverage that against him, try to remove that title from him, attacks it. Then he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's like, hey, I want to pray. Can you guys come pray for me? Everyone's sleeping. And he's in the garden by himself saying, hey, it's not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's now struggling with this purpose. Like, what is my purpose? It's a short isolation, but it's an isolation period, right. quarantine. And then obviously the last one, he's, He's crucified the cross. He dies. Put in the tomb for three days, right? And his entire destiny now is is hanging on this thing. And he comes out resurrecting power, and he's the Amen. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, right? And so I started looking at that same thing, like, all right, God, Jesus has been isolated, and in the isolation, he's a challenge. And so I need to keep on going back in the presence of God, no matter what I do, mm -hmm. and just start letting myself go into the joy. What does the joy of the Lord look like? Right. If He's my strength, what does that look like? So I'm going to lean into joy as much as I can because a lot of people are being depressed. You know, A lot of people are feeling the affections of this thing. Like, I, I was at a friend's house. His cat saw me and his cat took off running. And I said, dude, what's up with your cat? He goes, bro, you're the only person he's ever seen outside of my wife and I. Wow. He hasn't had any human action interaction at all. Just you're the first human beings. He didn't even know what to do. The cat just took off running. Then I see, like a couple weeks later, I see another friend of mine and his kid started crying. Went to his. He asked him to come over for his birthday party. Kid, every time I went in, we just start crying. And I says, bro, I was like, I must be spooking your kid out. He goes, again, he only knows the family. He's only been around the family. He's never seen another wow. human being. And I'm thinking to myself, man, what? kind of trauma is this thing producing yeah, uh, wow. people that haven't been around anybody haven't been touched by anybody yep. else and stuff like that that's the psyche that's happening right now but mm -hmm. again if you create an atmosphere where it's full of joy and you know my kids I have two kids we were out and about and I was trying to put my kids as many places that he could interact with people at the right. park I put him in soccer yeah. you know I did all these things yeah. Just so that he wouldn't have to struggle with that isolation himself, you yeah, know, wow. and his his own identity coming out, you know, the things yeah. like that. But no, it's yeah. it's definitely heavy, man. It's like yeah. people are going through depression, highest level of depression, highest level of divorce rate, highest levels of suicide, yeah. you know. But again, I mean, we we carry the answer to that right. whole thing. Amen. You know? that we, we definitely yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. You know, and 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 that's what's that's what's good about it. It's just now. It's just learning how to, you know bring forth that answer right yeah in different ways right it's not yeah. the same way we, we used to do it before and this you know? is it this is the one yeah, way. yeah this is one of the ways exactly yeah. you know yeah. that there, there, there's so many you know and 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 technology is good you know because technology yeah. gives us the ability to do different things and then technology is bad yeah. at the same time because I mean, it could i, I was know. stubborn I'm, yeah. a, I'm a stubborn head i was like people like oh go online i was yep. like nah i don't want none of that i'm just gonna go old school <laughs> just yep. here we are live you know who cares if people see us who yep. cares was stubborn man and yeah. then covid came and it was like bro if you don't get online you're gonna you're gonna lose right you know you're gonna lose the window that god has created for you yeah it's true you know and i jumped online started doing line services i would say i got sick so i was doing preaching from my house you know i was doing, basically I had to go online right from my house right and then those opportunities just start opening up for people that have never heard me before started hearing me 
the, my band, my bandwidth started expanding, yeah. you know, and I was telling you early, like, after I got sick, I made a video about it to help encourage people, like, this is not a death sentence. Right. And I'm talking about March, so, like, yeah. early on, everybody was like, you're going to die, right? Yeah. That death sentence, I was like, hey, I want to give you hope. You're not going to die. Just because you get it doesn't mean you're dead. Like, right, you have right. to, you have to force yourself into that, like, yeah. God's going to see me through this thing, build right. faith, grab onto hope, build faith. But through that process, you know, churches started calling me, hey, can you speak to my staff and just kind of encourage my staff? What was it like? What'd you do? Mm -hmm. How'd you get through it? The mental capacity of it all. And again, I told them the same thing. I was just changing my rhythm every hour on the hour so that I would come out of this thing even stronger. Yeah. And, uh, and again, a whole new level of doors opened up. That was probably like one of my first YouTube videos I've ever made, you know? Yeah. And it was probably raw, as raw yeah. can be, you yeah. know? I think the camera fell down on it and stuff oh, like that. Well, you did it. But I did it, right. And again, because of technology today, you know, it's just amazing. I, I equate it to like the idea when, you know, here's Malachi to Matthew. They call it the 400 years of silence. There's no prophetic word. But when Jesus arrives, by the time he's born, the Greeks have already taken over majority of the, the known world, forces them to understand the Greek language. And then Rome takes over Greek and they build all these roads all over the world so they can get their armies to protect mm. the empire they built. Mm. And then Jesus comes on the scene. So when the gospel comes out, it has universal language, which is Greek, and it has roads, you know, hence all roads lead to Rome, right. has roads to take this gospel all over the world. Mm. I mean, it's the perfect time of the Lord. And I equate technology the same way. It's like God, Facebook, Instagram, yep. TikTok, Snapchat, all these platforms, everybody was like, I'm not going for that. I'm not, you know, I don't want to be part of that. And all of a sudden it takes off and it's like, you know, here I am trying to learn how to do TikTok videos because I know that this is another platform that God is going to use to get the gospel message to places where we would never think we could go, you know, right. like behind, you know, going into like Pakistan, like being able to share in nations like Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan. Yep. You know, it's, it's cool to buy a plane ticket and be there, but, it's an, but now you don't have to do that. You could sit in your house, at your desk, drinking your coffee, yep. and then literally touching the nations without ever leaving your house. Yeah, you're, you're literally. Incredible. Yeah, it's like I was talking to to my brother, and 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 we were talking about um about something being global, right? And and he was like, John, like, you 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 got your YouTube channel going on. You're already global. That's it. You're global. Yeah, like yeah. now, it's so easy to become global. You know, right. back back then, it was like, oh, this is a global company. You know, they have yeah, yeah. locations in you know, Australia, in, in Africa, and all that stuff. And now it's like you could create a video and be global now, you know right, what I mean? Because right, your video right. could hit all, all, all types of people, yeah. reach all over the world. And I've always been for it, um, but I think that, that it's also helping the church grow in a way. I think God is oh, doing yeah. like, an, a major, like a major awakening for the people, yeah, yeah. for the true in Christ, you know what I'm saying? For the true in Christ are gonna arise up and they're gonna start doing what what they need to do, you know. But now, for you, right? Before, so now before the pandemic, right? Yeah. Before that, like, what were you up? Where where were you involved in? Um, you yeah, know, was, my focus is always uh, missions, and my focus has always been unreached people groups. So it's always in America. It's been inner city, um, you know, inner city poverty. You know, how do you know? Um, I'm a kid that you know. My father came to this country as an immigrant, and so we grew up, you know, you same way, right? Same story probably, right? Um, I grew up in Jackson Heights, Queens, and eight of us living in a two-bedroom apartment, you yeah. know? Then having my aunt come over with her five kids, 13 of us in a two-bedroom, and everybody's trying to get the thing off. But, you know, my father had enough wits to like, he had enough ability to dream more than what, you know, his American dream was like, I want a big slice of the pie. Right. That enabled us to move into different things. I look at some of the kids in the neighborhood in the community now. It's like they don't they don't have a vision for for that. You know, like one of the craziest things that you know when people are really destitute is by asking them a simple question: What do you dream about? Mm. And if they have no response, then you know what future is there. If you mm. can't even simply dream of a better future than you have, and it tells you the destitution of, of that community. Wow. You know. Yeah. And so That's inner really city, good. inner city is my thing. And then outside of inner city, in America, it's also Native American because it's like, how do you, the Native American people who've been, hair's been cut, been forced to take on uh, American English names, right. forced to speak English, not their native language, uh, forced to take on Christianity, taken away from their family, put in boarding schools, 
And then some of those boarding schools, unfortunately, had a lot of high-end um, child molestation yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yep. But yet, like, um, there is a move within them. They're, they're, they're the people of this land, of this, the natural origin of this land. They're the native people. And God has a calling for their lives, you know? Yeah. Uh, until we see, like, that native people restored, their, their honor, their pride, their identity right. in the things of God, then I'm believing like we won't really see the fullness of what God wants to do in America, you know. Yeah. And uh, did did you always have like that that passion or like how, how for missions? You, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, missions yeah, for missions. And young. and this is well, this is the reason when I got saved, I got saved late. I think it was 30 when I got saved, and three months after I got saved, I went on my first mission trip. Mm. And and it was it's comical because I didn't even want to go. My pastor was like, "Hey, we're going to send you on a mission trip." There's a whole bunch of women. They need a male escort. You're an ex-Marine. Who better than you to take them from America to Romania? Yeah. And I was like, listen, I literally don't know, even know John 3.16 yeah. right now. I have zero prayer language. Yeah. I can't even read the Bible that well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I couldn't even really read that well. And I was like, you, and let alone read the Bible. I didn't even know where to start. I had zero reason. There was no reason I should have gone on this trip. Mm. Right, my pastor knew something though, and he's like, "No, I want you to go." I said, "Why well, don't the money?" He said, "Someone already paid for it," and I'm like, "Someone already paid for it." I was like, "This is a setup," yeah, you know. Yeah. I end up going, and I'm going to Bucharest, Romania, and and at that time the country had collapsed, and thousands and thousands of children were being abandoned in the city of Bucharest, like that. Families would come in from the country, leave their kids on the corner, and then go back to their homes. Wow. in hopes that someone would take them in or take care of them. I mean, these families, it was a communist country that this guy, Ceausescu, was trying to build this huge army, so he was, like, promoting, like, everyone have 9, 10, 11 kids. The then then the uh, country collapses, whatever, Motion and so what do you do with all these the kids? Yeah. Well, you just leave them on the street and take off. So now you're in a community, a city where thousands of kids are living on the street. They're home. That's the homeless community. And I get there, and this guy, Christy, goes, hey, I need you to help me one time. And I said, bro, I don't pray for people. I don't, right. I don't tell anyone about Jesus. That's not my thing. I've only been saved for three months. You know, I kept on telling him that. Yeah. He laughs. He thinks it's funny. We go into a sewer. We climb down a sewer to hand out sandwiches. Because I'm like, it's October, November. It's cold out there. Wow. And I'm like, why are we going to the sewer? And he's like, that's where the kids are, you know? That's unbelievable. And I'm like, the kids? And he's like, yeah. I was like, who'd you think we were coming here for? I was like, you said homeless people. And he's like, yeah, they are homeless. And I'm like, kids? And I was just like, a righteous anger came over me. And I was like processing, like, God, like, how has this even happened? Like, mm. if you're a good God, then how is this happening type of thing? Right. And I get down there and like, literally he says something. It was dark, pitch black, smelled, and it was super hot because a hot water main valve ran through the sewer system. So down there, it was super hot. It was cold up here, but down there, it was hot. Little lights go on, and next thing you know, I see all these little faces. Wow. And, and I'm like, man, and they're kids, five, six, seven years old. You know, the oldest person was like 14. He was like the senior leader of this whole group of people, kids, wow. basically. And the weight of that hit me, man, so much. Because here we are giving these sandwiches out. We're like a bread this big with a piece of cheese and a piece of ham that were like this big. Was, oh. You know, and I'm like, this is what we're giving them? Like, man. And I start weeping. And this girl comes running out of the corner. I see her coming out of the corner of my eye. Jumps in the air and I catch her in the air. And she's wiping the tears from my eyes. And she says something in Romanian. And when she says it, everyone almost immediately goes to their knees and just starts worshiping the Lord. Wow. And this is like candlelight. So now it's like almost like a candlelight vigil is going on. And in oh, the process, man, yeah, it was a crazy experience, man. Till this day, it marks me. And when, I, when he gets off the ground, I said, the guy, Christy, I said, what did she say? And he goes, uh, she said, in the midst of suffering, there's a God worth worshiping. And I was like, man, that's it. Like, mm. I, I never have to hear another sermon on worship or why we worship. I never have to be, go some theological book to read why we worship. I knew right then and there, in the midst of suffering, there is a place that we can open up our hearts and know that God is still good, you know? Wow. And that literally marked me. 
like from that day forward, missions has always been burned on my heart, man. Wow, yeah. dude, that's dude, that, yeah. that's an intense story. Yeah, yeah, and especially you just. You, I just you, came across. <laughs> right, I just came across. I literally came home. I was living in California when I got saved. I literally came home. I was living in Santa Ana, California. There's a street called uh, Grand Avenue, kind of just like New Haven, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a Grand Avenue. Everybody yeah, everywhere. Grand right? Avenue <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, and the Grand Avenue was grand. It, had, it was like all the, it was like the Main Street, but it was like the, uh, you know, West Coast. We're talking West Coast. We're talking about more the Mexican culture. It's low riders, gangbangers, everything, right on that one strip, man. And I went down there and just like straddled this concrete garbage can. And I was like, I don't know much about Jesus, but I know he's good. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to talk about, the goodness of God. Because wow. at that point in time, I said, listen, I don't know anything. But the guy who never met Jesus, he doesn't know anything. Right. And I know just a little yeah. bit more yeah. than he does. And that's all I'm going to talk about is how good God is. Oh, wow. And I just started preaching from that day forward on the streets, man. Yeah. And so that passion of like inner city and, uh, you know, I met a guy from Teen Challenge, Frank Jimenez, pulled me in. And he says, Lenny, help me reach the gangbangers of uh, West Coast, you know, help me reach these gangbangers. And I said, how do we do that? And he goes... We have to catch them before they hit that age where it's like, this is it. Yeah, like that 4 to 12. Yeah, 14. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what we did. We started reaching kids that were 9, 10, 11, yeah. trying to get them out of the gang mentality, you know? Yeah. Because that thing is a wicked curse, man. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. Father, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, fathers. Yeah, like, it's a long history. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, and, in, it's in it, man. And, and that's you know? crazy, you know, because... I, God puts in a, um, a a passion to all of us. You know what I mean? There, there's like that passion there that, that God puts us in. Sometimes we think that that like we need to. That's why I like that you said about the like the books. Like you didn't like that that marked you when yeah. that lady told you that in the in the tunnel. You know, um, in the sewer. Um, and in the midst of of all this like you know mess that's going on, with his reason to to serve God, and and I think like we overcomplicate, right? Like you know, how how simple it is, yeah, you know, yeah. to, to bring the gospel to somebody without it, like throwing it down their throats and just being with humility, you know, doing it with love yeah. and and just like, you know, being there. But and then it, it had to take you to experience something, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like that yeah, yeah. for you to like really see like, wow, man, th this is like, then uh, how, how did you feel when you came back home? Right. right? When you came yeah. back home, and so that, what was that? That was the thing. When I came back home, I, I felt like a foreigner all over again. Like, here I was back, and, you know, I was part of a mega church, 3,000 members, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and this is like early 2000s, so they had everything you could think of, you know. And I was thinking to myself, why do we have all this stuff? Like, we need to, we need to just save the lost. Like, we just need to, like, like send more missionaries. And I, I felt like... The, the the American church was no longer my home in a sense. It was weird. I just didn't feel at home anymore. And I felt like we needed to be out there with people who had never heard the gospel before. You know, like never heard it. Like I just, I was in, prior to COVID, I was in Nepal. I went to Nepal like three times in 2019. Mm. And the first time I went there, uh, you know, mainly Buddhist and then Hindu, you know, is the, is the other major religion. And I would sit down with people and say, you ever heard of Jesus Christ? And they were just like, who? And I was like, Jesus. And they were like, I have no idea who you're talking about. Mm. And I'm like, you've never heard of Jesus? And they were like, nah. And, then, and now they're intrigued because I'm asking them. Mm -hmm. And the weight of that was like, oh my Lord, I'm now in a position where I have to tell this guy about Jesus Christ. I'm the, literally the first person to tell him about Jesus. And I need to do this right. Yeah. Because if not, he's going to get all get it wrong, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so I can't go heavy grace thinking like you can do whatever you want to do and Jesus loves you, right? Yeah. But I, and I can't go like he's a judging God who's going to like Fire go to hell. Yeah, God. yeah. Throw, throw you in hell if you yeah. do one thing wrong. Yeah. And I was, I was like, okay, I have to present this message to this guy. And as I'm telling this story to this guy, you know, and 40 minutes later, the guy's like, oh, wow, that's incredible. And just literally gets up and says, thank you, shakes my hand and walks away. Yeah. And I'm like, what about Jesus? And he's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm a Buddhist. But there's college kids in the background who are listening the entire time at we're eavesdropping okay. and literally sit down and say, can you tell us more? Mm. We don't know. We we have no idea who you're talking about. And then like seeing them like literally get saved right then and there. Like, wow, I want to know Jesus. 
and then going into the villages. That's that's in the city, Kathmandu. Then going into the villages where people have like nothing and they're like farmers and that's how they live and next thing you know you're telling them about jesus and like it's again like i don't even know who who you're talking about all i know is buddha or i know some hindu mm -hmm. yogi god and yeah. the weight of that too is like man we 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 can hear the gospel every day if we want to like mm -hmm. we can go on youtube we can go on wow. podcasts we can you know mm -hmm. but there's people out there that have never heard it. and i think again this is the technology piece of that right. is like Hey, we don't even have to leave our houses any longer yep. to get this gospel out across. No, you know? of course not. And 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 with that, um, touching on that topic, there, like when you go to the different places, because I've I've experienced it. Well, we've gotten a lot um, trips to Latin America and yeah. stuff, and you see, like it's 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 always like a culture shock when you go to these things and you come back home, and then you're yeah. like, wow, man, like so many. It's like always that first thing that comes into mind, like you know, we take advantage of you know that, so many. That yeah, like it just hits you right there, like the moment you yeah, land. It's like all these things, all these things right? Yeah, yeah. So do do you like? And then as I as I view it, sometimes it almost becomes like it's. I guess it's like the the when you travel to countries like this, it's like they're more hungry, I guess, for the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that when you come back, like, not that you want to strangle somebody, like, dude, dude, yeah, but it's like, yeah. yo, bro, I just came from a country yeah, that is like hungry for God and they don't even know him. Yeah. And then you're like here, just like, uh, whatever, yeah, like, do, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do, do you feel like it's yeah. become, it's a little no. bit more difficult in our nation? No, like. Definitely. Definitely. Right. We have all these things. Um, there's this guy, uh, it's Ido Portal. His name is Ido Portal. He's like a a movement science science of movement. His whole thing is like, well, I never heard I, of yeah. Him. He's like he trained uh, Conor McGregor. That's how I found out oh, about okay. him early on. And um, his whole thing is about body movement. He he's like I don't like CrossFit because CrossFit only does the same exercises over and over again. I don't like gymnasts because they only do the same exercise. I don't like Pilates because they only do. This, He's like, we have to be moving and moving and moving. And um, he gets into the squat position. And he says, the body was created to rest here. The human body was created to rest here. Now, on the eastern side of the world, you know, if you, if you go to Nepal, India, Pakistan, all those, Middle East, everyone is in the squat position just to eat and have conversation, you know? Mm. Um, but here, because the western world, we have chairs, we have toilets, we have couches, we're always sitting. So we, our bodies have not been able to get in the squat position, you know? Oh. We're stuck in this position. Wow. And, and so I, I bring that up because it's like, I feel like the American church has been sitting in a chair for so long that it hasn't been able forced to get into the squat position. Mm. And, and I would look at it as like, maybe not the squat position, but in the kneeling position. Mm. We haven't been forced to be in the kneeling position, which really creates the atmosphere for hunger. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, and, and that, that's, that's I mean, impressive. I mean, people pick churches, unfortunately. People pick churches like, um, you know, if I had people call me, I want to come to your church, maybe. Church is real small. Right. I, I want to go in a church that's big so I can come in and come out and no uh, one know. No one knows who I am. No one knows if I missed, didn't miss, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to come to your, I want to come to church, but uh, you know, you don't, your youth group is not really that good, or it's not that big enough. Right. It doesn't do this things, so I won't go there. Like, and that's how people are picking church. People are picking church is like, um, you know, the pastor's a horrible pastor. Sermons are all right, but they got an amazing children's church, and that's really what's important to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? While in other countries, like, hey, we're just gathering together for the presence of Jesus, that's like. It. We don't, who cares? Like, we don't have a, we have nothing, you know? Um, right. You know, being in the Amazon jungle where people don't even have power, so there's no music. It's like hand clapping. You clap and you sing, right. you know? And true yet, worship. yeah, true worship, right? And in that process, like, you feel the presence of God, you know? Right. When I brand bring teams there, they always struggle because it's like, well, where's the keyboard? Where's the um, mm -hmm. guitar? Which are American instruments, right? Right. And then it's like, well, they don't have words, so how do I going to sing the songs if I don't have words on the screen? You know, and it's like, no, no, you got to, like, worship out of your own temple, you know? So much conformity, right? It's yeah, so, so yeah, conformity. yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it's, it's, it messes us up. Yeah. It messes us up. I don't want to be too hard in the American church, but it messes us up because we've, we've learned to sit instead of really being in that restful yeah. place. Yeah, but it, it's good to, to get that perspective and yeah. bring forth that perspective. Yeah. And we're not, and I definitely know you're not saying that the American church is, is, is not, 
is not right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You, you, it's just more of a perspective that right. you're seeing it from. And I totally agree with that too, because th there's nothing wrong with a with a big church. There's a I, to to me when it comes to like the the big churches, right? I, like even with the small ones, like. How long you're gonna stay like that? If, if we're yeah, supposed yeah, to grow, yeah, right? right? And it's not knocking right. the small little yeah, churches, yeah, yeah. but if we're supposed to be people that are supposed to grow and, and reach, multiply. right? The, and multiply, yeah. right? When Jesus left his disciples, yeah. he says, go ahead and, and multiply, you know, make more disciples of all yeah. tongues and languages. So I, I think we should be following that, yeah, that yeah. same direction, you know I, what I mean? I think everybody falls into that pattern of comfortable, right? right. Whether it's like 50 people or like 3,000. There's a level of comfort that every pastor falls into, right? Yep. And it's like, how do I push the envelope for more? Like yeah. three thousand is probably hard, but then it's like, well, then then start planting, you know. And yeah. you know, that's one of the things I loved about uh, Apostle Raul is yeah. like he just plants, 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 you yeah, know. Man. And uh, he's kind of always pushing that, that envelope yep. for growth, you know. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's he just got back. We we had a meeting with him yesterday, man. Shout out to Pastor Raul. Um, um he's um. Uh, CCRN church yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in Hamden, Connecticut. But uh, he just came. He was in Puerto Rico, but he's going. I think. Um, I think he's in Ecuador right now. But I've got. I've been blessed to go with him and travel with him yeah. to um, to different, you know, Latin American countries to to just get that perspective, right? To yeah. just see and and it's true. I think that that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Like right. planting and building, and and not not settling you know yeah what I mean? yeah yeah we can't yeah. just settle with right. what we can there, there, there's more you know yeah. what i mean and we just got to keep going and and asking god for i, I think the more we ask god uh, for the things aligned to his kingdom yeah the more he'll the, the more he'll continue to open up doors and, and opportunities yeah, you know? yeah that, that's what sure. i feel like god has been yeah. doing for you you know you like um outside of the camera you i know you were saying that man dude like during this whole you know season you know, working, you know, a lot of things were shut down, but you still saw the provision of God. Yeah, right? like, yeah, like yeah. Like, how did that make yeah. you feel that, that it's just like, um, that you can be at a place, right, where, where you know no income is coming, but at the same time feel at peace, right? Yeah. To know, you know, who, who, who you're, who you're resting in, you know what I mean? Right, how's, right. how's that been? I mean... If that kind of like so you know when you come to come to the Lord everyone says man just have faith brother right. <laughs> it's like well, that's Cliche, not the answer right? <laughs> yeah yeah that's not the answer I want yeah. but at the end of the day that's the answer it's yeah. like just have faith and like so you have these experiences in your lifetime to build to that level of faith and so I, even in our lifetime we've been at that door we're like man I don't know how we're gonna pay the bills I don't know what we're gonna do right. and then a check comes in the mail or little checks come in the mail but lots of little checks Right. That add up to the number you need it plus a little bit more because yeah. he's, you know, the God of abundance, right? Yeah. He's El Shaddai, right? Yeah. God of more than enough. And so that those moments and times of we've always kept them, treasure them. You yeah. know, like always the Bible says that Mary treasured these things yeah. in her heart. So we treasure those things. So when COVID happened and everything shut down, you know, your bills don't shut down. And uh, you know you wish you wish they did, but they don't shut down. Right, put it on pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the food bill doesn't shut down. You yep. know, you got two little boys that you know eat like gorillas. You know, yep. um, it's like, what do you do? And then and then you, you're like, just all right. I gotta trust God. I just mm -hmm. literally gotta trust God. You know. Yeah. And um, you know, stimulus check is nice, man. But you know, it's not. That's only gonna cover maybe a month or two weeks or something like, like that, a, right? Two weeks break. Yeah, out, yeah, man. yeah. And, and then you're time. right. And then you don't know what to do. Um, here, here was one of the most humbling things of a, uh, a husband and wife family, about five, wanted to move from the state they were in. Um, I don't want to say the state, just in case they watched it. Right. They know what it is, right? So they want to move from one state to another. That's their dream. All right. Beautiful house. And they cannot, for whatever reason, sell it. They just can't sell it. I mean, and it is like the best asking price possible, you wow. know? And they can't sell it. They literally just wake up one day like god puts them on my heart and they send me this check man like in the mail and a substantial amount of money and i was shocked because i was like man i didn't i didn't like how this, only god because it's not like we're real real close or anything like yeah. that you know send me this check i look at it, i start praying i call them up and say yo is, is this right like you know like yeah yeah we we're just, you know we're, we just felt like god told us to send you this and i just i said let me pray for you so i start praying for him and like the next Two or three days later, the house sells, man. Wow. And I felt so humble because I'm like, man, God, you know, sows a seed. Yes, yes. And, you know, you sow a seed in faith, and mm -hmm. then and then it opens up a door, and then 
you take that blessing and then you also sow a seed of prayer back there. Yep. And then, you know, it God keep, opens it, it up. Going, yeah, yeah. Saying? Yeah, and God opens up the door. They ended up selling their home for more than they were asking for and then literally moved to their their dream state that they wanted to be mm -hmm. in. And that's and they're flourishing there, you know. Oh man. God yeah. is so good. Yeah, man. yeah. So it's like when every time I hear the, these stories, bro, they it like motivates me so much, yeah. you know, to to just continue um not only believing in God, right? Yeah, yeah. But but like walking in God and, and just allowing God to, to continue to do whatever he needs to do in our lives, right? Yeah. And you hear the, these testimonies like this because you know, who knows who's gonna be watching this that is probably is struggling right now. They don't have the finances that they may need, but all they have to do is like genuinely have faith and believe. Yeah, right. Trust God. And yeah. and sometimes even even in that stage that you may think that you don't have God is asking you to give. Yeah. And you're like, but how can I give right. if if I'm like struggling right now? You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But whatever it is, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's why God blessed that woman who came in and she just had, you know, what she gave whatever she yeah, had. Yeah, widow's might, like, right, right. And yeah. it was mighty. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? What yeah. she gave, it was more than the rest of them right. because it came from a special place, right. you know, in right. her heart and stuff like that. And, and um, I, I, I'm like so overjoyed, bro. I just seen yeah, like, yeah. and just hearing what God is doing. I give you one better than that. Uh, well, I'm, in, I'm in North Dakota again Native American people right. out there um, a pastor friend of mine um, has a friend of his that I, I'm not sure what business he is, he's in but he gets excess supplies of stuff and so for for companies sometimes it's better to donate it than try to sell it or mm. just so it's like we'll donate this stuff so they literally sent a million dollars worth of clothes in a tractor trailer work clothes and all this stuff like that. By the time, no one knew it was even in it. Right. They send it up to North Dakota to friends of mine, uh, the halls, right? They send it to them. And so they're like, what do we do with a million dollars worth of clothes, man? You know? And it's like, there were like 26 pallets of clothes, about four feet high. And they start going through the clothes and they're like construction work. Most of them are like construction work clothes. Now, North Dakota is like one of the biggest oil producing states in America. Hmm. So those types of clothes are the clothes that the workers need in those areas, <laughs> you know? And like, so here we are, I go up there in June and we're handing out a million dollars worth of clothes, man. Wow. In the middle of the pandemic, you know? And then we're taking clothes to the Native American reservations and giving them clothes. And we're, you know, we're, this is like, yo, we just keep on just giving. Like, you know, God set up this guy who's like a million dollars, like I need a tax write off. So I'm going to give you a million dollars worth of clothes. And I, in my head, I'm like, God, I want to be in a place where I can write a million dollar check someday, man. Yeah, no, yeah. You know? And, and, and that's true, man. I, you know what? Now that you say that is, uh, um, um, I, I declare that over your life because Amen. I declared it over my, my yeah, life yeah. too. I said, man, one day I'm going to be able to be like a, like an investor. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That I don't know where is it going to come for that, you know, and things that we want to build and do that I, I can just, you know what? You yeah, want to start yeah, that yeah. up? Let's go. Let, let's, let's do kick it. it up. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without having to worry, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But but I think that that's why like like 2020, and I totally agree with you, 2020 has been like such a great year, at least for me. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of things, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, it's almost like what people see like in the middle of, of, of darkness, right? Yeah. God has been like shining light in so many different, you know, areas that that we've been able to, to see God's hands move. You know, yeah, I mean? you're yeah. talking about them now and, and right. it's all happening during, you know, this whole March, you know, yeah, almost yeah. a whole year. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, physically, I, I've dropped 48 something pounds. I'm, I'm doing CrossFit now. I'm, yeah. I'm like more flexible than I've ever been before. Probably stronger than I, I almost as strong as I was when yeah. I was younger, right? <laughs> and then my marriage and my family, we would take long walks in the woods, man, together. Yeah. And so, like, my marriage is like honeymoon stages all over again. Wow. We're on like almost we like, thirteen years in August. Amen. And my two boys, like, the center focus of that, like, being a father. What does it look like to be a father to raise godly kids? Yeah. My focus started becoming more about that, you know. And then the financial aspect, God opened up all these doors for finances to come to take care of us. Mm -hmm. Ministry platforms opened up that we never thought could happen, you know. And then being able to, to, to see, like, globally, like, the, like, a whole level of entrepreneurs were launched in this year. Mm -hmm. You know, in the midst of a pandemic, yep. in the midst of, like, the race, racial tension, yep. political tension, 
you know, millions of entrepreneurs are like, I lost my job and what am I going to do? Yep. And like, boom, just start doing something different. Yep. You know, I, I know a guy that started just like picking up tires, old tires, and then selling them for some other thing. I, I couldn't understand the, what he did, but um, he's like, oh, we just started doing this, like mm -hmm. picking up old tires from companies and selling, reselling them for, for another product. So many opportunities. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah. And he's like, we never foresee it as a company. We were just doing it as a way of like making a little bit of money just to get through. And next thing you know, it became a business, you know? Oh. It's, it's just crazy, you oh. know? God, God is so good, man. Yeah. God is so good. And um, um, I, I thank you for, for, for sharing these these stories and, and how, you know, um, just God's faithfulness in the midst of it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, and always, yeah. always being faithful, you know, and, and, and us seeing it. And even when we feel sometimes, because we're human, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure you come across moments where 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 you feel like you know um, like is this where it stops you know what I mean is mm. is this where where I call it quits or this yeah, is where, yeah, where it yeah, ends or, yeah, or, or what yeah. is that have you have you ever yeah I mean there was I mean it? I mean during the the um, you know during the pandemic it's like I have, I'm a church planter so my church is like like four years five years now um, and you're you're wondering like what am I doing like right. you know. Yeah. Like, is this thing, is it, is it going to fail right. because of COVID? You right. know what I'm saying? Um, you know, as a church planter, I would wake up, you know, have your service on Sunday, and then you wake up Monday, you're like, I I'm shutting this thing down, man. You know, like, right, right. and then you get through that process, and you feel like, okay, we're doing good. Right, right. And then COVID comes in, you're like, man, we're back to square one. Yeah. Like, our people are scattered all over the place. Yeah. And there isn't a place to gather them because there isn't a place to gather them. Right. And... And so there was a season there it was just like wrestling with that. It was like, are we doing God's will? Or is this, does God literally, is COVID an answer to shut the, the church door down and do something else, you know? Right. And so there's, there was a window there that we were really just praying. We're like, oh, we got to pray. What's going to happen next? You know, what do we do next? When the doors open up, are we going to be ready for the door, when the doors open up? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then when the doors started opening up, um, as soon as they opened up, I just opened up and said, I can't, I can't stay quiet. I got to yeah, open yeah. up. Yep. And our church actually grew like in this season. It grew because we were one of the first churches to open up. And, mm -hmm. they were, and, and you know, un unfortunately, because uh, of the laws, whatever, a lot of the big churches couldn't open up. Mm -hmm. But people wanted to gather. Right. So I knew people at first, people were coming. They were just like, I'm going to hang out here until my church opens right. up and I'll go back. And I was like, I'm cool with that. Right. Um, you know, because the last thing I want to do is like steal sheep or whatever. Right, 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 right. <laughs> But at the same time, people were coming. They were like, "Hey, we just we just want to go back to like simple things. Like, sh let's strip everything down. Yeah. Let's get rid of all the programs and yep. let's just go right back to the gospel, yep. worship time, extended times of worship." Because I was like, "I'm not in a rush to go home. To right. do what? Be locked inside the house yeah. and not around people. Let's extend our worship to get in the presence more, and let's do the simple gospel together." You yeah. know. The, the beginning that's yeah, how it all yeah, started yeah man. exactly yes yeah, yeah, true man yeah. going, going back to the beginning and 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 just like you know preaching what the gospel is yeah straight up you know that's what people need yeah you know you've come across people that don't even know about jesus and i truly believe that too dude that that there's so many people that that haven't heard of yeah. the gospel yeah and better yet haven't even heard who jesus is right i do believe in yeah, that yeah, yeah. because it happened to me one time in the bronx i forgot i was in a youth service and i was ministering to 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 someone and and i asked them a, a simple question like that too and they were like no i don't know i really don't know and i was like wow like it really that marked yeah, me yeah, too because yeah, i was yeah. like wow there is people then that are in need and this is coming from the bronx where every corner <laughs> right, right, store right. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a church right next to it right, you right, know what i mean right, so right. I'm like, oh my God, wow, this is crazy. So it's it's so true, man. We got yeah, yeah. we definitely got to go back to the beginning. Yeah, which which like that speaks volumes, right? Like we have, you know, in New York and even New Haven, you have church buildings everywhere. Right. But you'll still meet people who are not plugged in, and right. like it's it says something to us, like where where are we missing the mark? Mm -hmm. Where people are not coming into the building, and are we keep on trying to attract people into a building? Or should we be going out there and trying to meet them mm -hmm. where they are? Yeah, you of know? course. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's where we, um, I, I think that's what God is trying to do at this time. To yeah, be honest, yeah. Bro. I'm like, yeah. Like, I know God is moving and doing something amazing too during during this these moments, but I one thing I do believe in is that He's 
he's trying to rise people up to just do it different like the yeah, way you yeah, used yeah. to do it before right. it's not working you right. know go back to 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 this step and let's start from fresh i can't yeah, yeah, i think yeah, god yeah. is allowing yeah, us go back to, to have the like foundation reboot, yeah, 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 yeah 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 and yeah he's allowing us to like you know really like contemplate on how we used to do things yeah and it's like you know and technology wise right that you yeah, never yeah, but yeah. Then how, how has it become a blessing for you so it's like there, there, there's so many options for us at this moment yeah and i think if we take a hold and advantage of it like you're doing and, and like you're allowing god to also do it then we're gonna see so much other stuff you know happen like and these you, you mentioned a handful of testimonies you know what i mean yeah, and, and yeah. there's more and there's to come. way there's way more and there's you other know? people that obviously i can talk about that yeah. are just like god is like doing incredible things in their lives yep. right now. I have a friend of mine that's going to do two meetings a day, every day, through the entire month of February. Uh, they just moved into a brand new building. They bought the building and then COVID happened. Yeah. And they were like, what do we do now? Like, yeah. can't even meet. And they still kept on working on the building, working on the building. So now they're officially going to open up. And they're like, man, how do we get people to come in? Yeah. You know? And he was like, man, we're just going to do a meeting, two meetings a day, every day, through the entire month of February. Wow. And and I'm like, yeah, that's that's amazing, you yeah. know. Whether and it's like whether pe two people, three people, who cares? Like, yeah. we're just gonna do the commit, yeah. 28 days of February to the Lord and believe God's gonna do something that's in the powerful, midst of it. Man. Yeah, you know, the, you know? The, the the quality over quantity. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, as long as it's quality yeah. worship, quality praise, then yeah, yeah. God is gonna do what He needs to do right. on His behalf. And I think we we all need to get into that into that mode. So if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, yeah. that's watching this, you know, connect. You know, and allow yourself to to expand a little bit more to do something greater and bigger during these times right now. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I believe you're you're doing them, and I would love to continue to um, um to connect with you a little bit more. Yeah, and um um see other ways that, that there's some things that have been on my mind and on my heart as far as like you know other ways of of you know reaching people because that's always been yeah, on my heart yeah, too yeah. to just reach people in the streets and pray for people and just allow God to just be God right you right, know right. and and allow us to just do God together and yeah. forget about like how many people I'm gonna bring to your event or how many people <laughs> yeah you're gonna do right mine. right right how about right. we just do God together yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah. and we just you know go and and we go through the hurdles together and we right, go right, through the right, ups right. and downs together and yeah. we just because we're on the same we're trying to achieve the same, same thing. thing right right you know what I mean right, and right. I'm not trying to be better than you not trying to be a man but man at the end of the day yeah, we're yeah. all fall short of God's glory and yeah. we just want to be able to, to be pleasing at the end of the because dude my, my whole thing bro you know what it is that you get to that point bro in your life where God comes dude and then he tells you that he doesn't know you bro oh, and man. you know what I'm saying like oh, it, it like kind of haunts you in the yeah, background yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I, don't yeah, wanna, yeah. I don't even want to yeah, yeah. tamper right, 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 with right, that right. bro I, that's why sometimes you like it's like messy to even talk about like what are, the, what are you doing for God it's like I'm doing all these things, but at the end of the day, they could mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to God, it's like I didn't even know you. Dude, you know, dude, and and that's something that, that I'm like, I think about it every once in a while. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, God, I want to know you, and I want you to know me. Exactly. Bro. When I get yeah, there, yeah, yeah. I want you to look at me and be like, Yo, what up, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Give me a hug, and it's like, cause that, that'll be the 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 biggest freaking like scam or fraud that, you know, <laughs> that would happen bro yeah, so, yeah. Uh, um but dude i i I, yeah. I just thank you bro i really thank you for no the thank you man for, i love it thank for, you for the coffee it was yeah, amazing no good man <laughs> I, I loved it Cafe Real, the, the, that's the, we'll talk about this after but um, yeah uh this coffee company is um is an amazing coffee company mm. in bristol connecticut oh wow um i connected with the owner and to make the long story short yeah remember, um, we connected in such a short period of time, and and it, I believe it was a godly connection. Yeah. Um. I I came back. For, I went with him to Colombia to see the farms, and I went wow. through the whole process. Like it's wow, so legit. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Um. Um. And this is Alexa right now. Let me know somebody in the front door. And she's like interrupting <laughs> my interview right now. Um. But I met this guy, dude, and. It became a blessing. Long story short, he gave his life to Christ when we were out there. Wow. And, and it's been, wow, he, wow God has wow. been doing some amazing stuff yeah. in his life, too. Um, but if you can, check him out in Bristol, Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. Cafe Real yeah. Is, is an amazing coffee. I know, I know a pastor up there. I'm going to tell him. Yeah, dude, Go check yeah, it out. let him know about yeah, this, yeah. man. Um, this is it's legit just a little side note for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this is a coffee break, and we do. You we know, do enjoy, drink coffee. We do drink coffee. You know this this I mean? cup's not empty. Yeah. And it's not about, you know, the, the same... Um, I had to do it a little bit different this time because I usually have cars. I usually have...
coffee that I showcase yeah, when I'm yeah, doing yeah. these kind okay. of interviews. Right. So this time I'm just having coffee, but I'm not gonna have the car. I usually promote cars and because I love cars myself. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but this one is more intimate. This one was more intimate. Um, I like this one. It was a little bit different. Um, and um, I know people are gonna be blessed by it, blessed by your testimony. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, blessed by your words. Um, let everybody know where you're congregating at if you're in. The yeah. So we're so. we're in New Haven at um, three ten State Street, um, downtown New Haven. Uh, we meet basically at the State House, which is like a concert venue. So it doesn't look like a church when you go inside it, nice. you know. But um, but we're worshiping God, and yeah. God is there, you know. Amen. I'll, I'll put the information yeah. in the in, in the video and stuff, and and you can go check it out and and check him out, check out the church. And above all things, right, it's just, you know, having experience with God, right? It's not about yeah, just yeah. going to a physical building and a, and, and yeah, a place, you know, right. but like moving all these old concepts yeah. that we're always used to having and just going there for to just worship God and, and, and praise Him. So um, um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and for watching this, this segment of Coffee Break. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't liked it, hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm to continue to push the videos further yeah. and um, um, get more traction um, to the video so that'll help out tremendously um, if you love coffee check out Cafe Real um, any anyone who buys coffee from Cafe Real it also a portion of it goes towards my YouTube channel oh, I wow. have a collaboration with yeah, them yeah. that's been an amazing one um, so if you love coffee check them out I have them in the description and um, like every coffee break episode never settle with being good when you have always been meant to be great um, and thank you, Pastor Lenning, us thank for doing you, us. Man. If there's any last words you want to tell somebody, after nah, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for Jonathan for having me here. I hope this blesses you again. Like, 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 like. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. So uh, God bless you all, and we'll see you in the next one later. <laughs>